Welcome dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about environmental education and environmental ethics. So before uh, going to environmental ethics, we will discuss about environmental education. So the issue of environmental education uh, has been thoroughly discussed at several nation and international seminars, workshops and conferences after uh, the deliberations at Forex in 1971 and United Nations Conference on Human Environment at Stockholm in 1972 that we also called Earth Summit. So the environmental education basically is a process that allows individuals to explore environmental issues, engage in problem solving and take actions to improve the environment. As a result, individuals develop a deeper understanding of environmental issues and have the skills to make informed and responsible decisions. So these uh, environmental issues, knowing about environmental issues, exploring, problem solving. This was also scope and importance. Why we study the environmental studies? Basically, that is the compulsory courses. Either uh, the one is studying the arts, commerce, medical or non-medical. So to sensitize, to explore the environmental issues, environmental education has an important role. So the outcome of Stockholm conference was to, uh, the establishment of United Nations Environment Program. And uh, there was held an international workshop on environmental education, the Belgrade chapter at Belgrade, Yugoslavia in 1975 that was organized by UNESCO and later on International Conference on Environmental Education. So you should remember the United Nations Environmental Education Conference was held in 1975 in Yugoslavia. So on the occasion of first international conference of environmental education held in the New Delhi 1980, the late uh, Prime Minister of India, uh, Indira Gandhi, observed that environmental education is to help a rose of social consciousness and make community aware of the fact that the good of the individual and that the community are both harmed by ecological disruptions. So in 1985, there was a second international conference of environmental education in New Delhi. So what are the various components uh, that we uh, discuss uh, in this uh, lecture about the environmental education. So before that, the chief objective of the environmental education is the, that individual and the social group should acquire awareness, knowledge, develop attitude, skills, and abilities, and participate in solving real life environmental problems. So the perspective should be integrated interdisciplinary and holistic in character. So going to the components of the environmental uh, education, or we can say the objectives of environmental education, uh, these were formulated to help uh, social groups and individuals towards the following. First is environment uh, awareness and sensitivity. So that is to acquire the awareness of and sensitivity to the total environment and its allied problems. So basically we should be aware what are the current environmental problems. Like currently we have around eight or 12 environmental problems. For example, air pollution, water pollution, desertification, deforestation, ozone layer depletion, and uh, plastic pollution. There are n number of environmental problems that we should, know, we, we, uh, we should be knowing. And the environmental education plays an important role in that. So the second one is knowledge and understanding. That is uh, gain a variety of experiences and acquire a basic understanding of the environment and its associated problem. So after aware about that this, this is a problem, then we should be knowing 
uh, why this problem happens, how this problem happens. So that understanding we have to gain. And that is a second objective or component of environmental education. So the third one is the attitudes of concern or motivation. So that is to acquire a set of values and feelings of concern for the environment and the motivation for active participation in environmental improvement and protection. So having the awareness towards the environmental problems and sensitivity or knowledge towards the uh, problems, that is not important. More important in what attitude we have, what we are doing for uh, basically uh, how we participate in environmental protection and movements. So the fourth one is the skills skills to identify and to help that is to acquire the skills for identifying and solving the environmental problems then we go in the problem solving first to identification knowledge then skill then we go for the solving the problems then uh, participation in activities that lead to the resolution of environmental challenges like the evaluation ability for example to evaluate the environmental measures and education programs in terms of ecological, economic, social, aesthetic, and educational factors. And also provide an opportunity to be actively involved in all levels or at all levels in working towards the resolution of environmental problems. So these were the various components or objectives of environmental education. So we are going uh, to now discuss about what are the guiding principles of the environmental education. So first is to consider environment in its totality. So the environment it in its totality means we should consider that the environment has all the components. First, when we study the environment, it is basically in layman's term, we see the our surroundings. So our surroundings have both things. Uh, man-made things, natural things, whether they are organic, inorganic, or they are living, non-living. So we consider environment as its totality, in its totality, uh, having the natural, artificial, technological, social, economical, political, moral, cultural, or historical and aesthetic. So there are various components that we should um, be keeping always together when we are discussing the environmental education. So the second one is to consider a continuous life process. Uh, for example, from uh, preschool to all higher education form, uh, levels, formal as well as informal or non-formal education. For example, in schools, we have a brief uh, awareness or knowledge about the environment. So that knowledge has to be, uh, I mean, increased or integrated. To the higher levels for example in um, 10 plus 2 or uh, 10 plus 1 you are studying the environmental science as an optional subject but in higher education institutions uh, as per the supreme court guidelines after uh, uh, in the recent past we have to study the environmental science or not environmental science but environmental studies as a compulsory subject so as what are the objectives of the environmental education that they are to be fulfilled? So this is the second one principle. Third one is to be an interdisciplinary in approach. So interdisciplinary means we have to uh, we have to uh, be interdisciplinary in the form that we are uh, studying the environment in relation to the other subjects like with biology, chemistry, sociology, psychology, education and number of so the environment can be studied with various subjects so there are various kinds of branches that environment can uh, be studied then to focus on current potential environmental situations that is and another way is that to emphasize active participation in prevention and control of uh, and solution to the environmental problems or control of pollution then to examine major environmental issues from local, national, regional, and international point of view. So these were the various principles. There are um, uh, more other principles, uh, guiding principles for uh, environmental education. For example, to consider environmental aspects in plans for growth and development. 
So this is a very important aspect of environment. When we are going to establish certain industries or in commercial area, we go for environmental impact assessment. So the environmental aspects should be incorporated whether, uh, when we are going for planning the growth development in any uh, area. So another is to emphasize the complexity of environmental problems and need to develop critical thinking and problem solving skills. Then to promote the value and necessity of local, national and international cooperation, cooperation in prevention and solution of environmental problems. Then it also uh, have to utilize diverse learning about environment and different approaches to teaching and learning about the environment. Also to help learners to discover the symptoms and the real causes of environmental problems that we are have the objectives of the environment. So these were the various guide, guiding principles of the environmental uh, education. So there is some kind of difference between environmental education and environmental information. For example, in environmental education, we increase public awareness and knowledge of environmental issues. But in environmental information, it provides facts or opinions about the environmental issues. So in environmental education, uh, it does teach individuals about critical thinking about the environmental problems problem solving so but in environmental uh, edu information it does not necessarily teach individuals about the critical thinking so it is just an information like we are reading the news or listening the news that is just an information but education is basically that uh, gives you the idea that gives you the skills for the critical thinking about the problems and it does enhance uh, environmental education enhance individual problem solving and decision making skills that is very important part of the environmental education but in environmental information uh, does necessary does not enhance it depends upon the individual and also uh, in environmental education does not advocate a particular point of view there are various point of views for example whether we should be going for the ecocentric or anthropocentric point of view but it does not advocate it uh, only uh, says how can we preserve our pristine environment uh, even uh, going for the development still we can preserve the environment so but in environmental information there while might, might be some an orientation towards certain point of view so it can a little bit can educate certain point of view of uh, the i mean the uh, whether we should go for the development or only for the e ecological or ecosystem conservation so in india uh, the environmental uh, scenario of india is very wide uh, in india uh, India is a highly diverse uh, country, climatically, geographically, geologically, edaphically, floristically, and there are uh, environmental education has to be essentially location specific because there is a diversity in the in various dimensions. So environmental education should be also focused based on the local areas. At first level, uh, special attention must be paid to the school going children and women. And uh, they are to be made aware about health, family planning, nutrition, rural development, slum improvement, sanitation and hygiene, water and food contamination, food or fuel, uh, many other things. And the non-governmental organization have to play an important role in uh, the dictionary of Department of en uh, Environment. Uh, there are more than 200 non-governmental organizations for which about 150 uh, areas of environmental education means uh, they have uh, gone for the environmental awareness in various fields uh, regarding uh, the at the school level. So there are various uh, i mean the stages like primary school lower secondary school higher secondary school so we have to encompass more education environmental education in primary schools then we go for the tertiary stage like in colleges then environmental education at university level then at university level there are various branches like uh, in at school level or at college level we are studying environmental 
uh, environment at various uh, stages like environmental studies. This is only concerned with the environmental disturbance and minimization of their impact through changes in the society. But when we are going for, for example, someone is going for the masters in environmental science, it deals with the study of process in the water, air, soil and organisms, which lead to the pollution or environmental damage. And to know a scientific basis for the establishing a standard, which can be considered acceptably clean, safe, healthy for the human and natural ecosystems. But the third dimension of studying the environment is the environmental engineering. This is the study of technical processes, which is used to minimize the pollution and assessment of impact of this environment, like the envir en environmental engineering or engineering sciences. So there is another concept that is environmental citizenship. It is an idea that each of us is an integral part of large ecosystem and that our future depends on embracing the challenge and adapting the responsibility and positively towards our environment. So the idea of uh, environmental citizenship was first developed by Environment Canada. It is now the, um, basically spreading all over the world. So this was all about the environmental education. So now we will focus on the environmental ethics. So what is ethics? Ethics is a philosophical di uh, discipline concerning with the moral principles. So when we discuss uh, the moral principles in respect to the environment, then environmental ethics can be defined as a code of appropriate behavior towards the environment and for maintaining sound human environment relationship. So environmental ethics has the potential to help uh, uh, to create a social order which protect the environment, integrate economy and ecology and promote material and ethical processes. So ecological studies, uh, for example, they uh, are complex physical relationship between living and non-living systems. And uh, economics analysis, the uh, economics analyzes the nature of commercial transaction of human society. And ethics is a systematic examination of our rights, our responsibilities and consequences of our conduct. Environmental ethics is a new subdiscipline of this philosophy that deals with the ethical problems surrounding uh, environmental protection, and it aims to provide ethical justification and moral motivation for the cause of global environmental protection. So the environmental ethics extends the scope of ethical concern beyond one community and nation to include on not only the all people everywhere, but also the animals. Uh, and the whole nature, the biosphere, uh, both now and beyond imminent future uh, to include future generations. So there are many overlap concerns and areas of consciousness among the environmental ethics, environmental politics, environmental economics, and environmental science and environmental literature. So there are many overlapping of the concerns. So. When we going, uh, when we are going for the point of view uh, about the environmental uh, ethics, we are first discussing uh, the environmental ethics under the preview of environment as a, a anthropogenic worldview. In this, uh, focus is given on Earth has unlimited supply of resources. What are the resources? basically all such kind of materials that we find in the nature that can be brought in the human use. Maybe it is the water, minerals, uh, forests, or petroleum products. These uh, in anthropogenic uh, viewpoint, they consider these uh, resources are unlimited. And second point of view is man is a superior species of this planet and have has every right to exploit Earth's resources for his needs. So the needs of the uh, humans never will stop because due to the race of the development among certain countries or communities, they start uh, exploiting the Earth's resources at very unsustainable rates. So the third one is success and uh, he called me and mankind depend upon healthy environment. So success depends upon 
uh, here is some correction success depends upon only the mankind and that depends upon the hel healthy environment and the development of mankind is of utmost importance at it raises standard of living <coughs> so here the more focus is given on the standard of our uh, standard of living we are uh, using the fossil fuels for the industries and we are using rate of energy at high rates so this is all about the anthropogenic view and second is the ecocentric view in ecocentric view it focuses on the earths have very limited resources when we are talking about the fossil fuels or water it has very limited resources all the living species including man and other uh, animals they have equal rights on the resources uh, the third one is the success and economy of mankind depends upon how nicely man drives benefits from the nature resulting in healthy environment and all have the right to meet their requirements for nature but not to an extent that degrades the environment and prove harmful to all living bring, uh, living beings on the earth and last one use of natural resources should be sustainable so that the requirements of uh, present generation are met and the resources as well as uh, the protection of the future uh, resources should be for the future generations but the three normative principles of environmental ethics are the environmental justice principle of uh, intergenerational uh, equality and principle of respect of environment these three principles we find in an ecocentric view where first is the justice environmental justice when we are speaking that the, each resource have equal rights i mean and every organism have equal rights on every resource that is present on the earth then intergenerational equality means we have to use the resources sustainably so that our future generation can also have some uh, available resources with them and the principle of respect for the nature when we are respecting the nature we are going for the development without degrading the environment so these were the various guiding principles uh, i mean uh, various guiding principles of the environmental ethics and uh, that whole and solely are met in an ecocentric view but they are not met in the uh, anthropogenic view so there are any uh, many other concepts like veganism animals should be treated with compassion not enslaved not made into commodities not to be suffered not killed for meat leather and fur not stolen from eggs and milk animals are also sentient and deserve respect so these are the veganism so the people who believe that we should go for the vegetable consumption more uh, not for the knowledge so the veganism also perpetuation that over future herding culture promote hierarchical and uncompensated uh, uh, compassionate uh, social structures based on cursed domination and ownership compassion for humans difficult when animals are not treated with compassion when animals are not treated with compassion uh, humans are not treated with compassion then how can we expect that the animals will be treated uh, for the compassion branding a uh, branded enslaved commoditized killed uh, promotes unhealthy diets uh, like high saturated fats promotes environmental degradation like one third of the green one third of one second of the uh, half of the fish is used for the animal feed so the rainforest degradation for grazing and cropland uh, feed uh, livestock like this is feeding the livestock in the ranching forests another view is the bio, bio regionalism that is lead a simple life with the local production of the food and other products by people that you know increase environmental awareness caring decreases exploitation and environment uh, exploitation of the environment and people basically what we grow we consume and we didn't export for the monetary benefits that is the main problem right now uh, we should go encourage bio regionalism and what are the needs of the environmental uh, education why we need environmental uh, ethics so first to develop uh, environmental uh, legislation 
then to enhance monitoring and effective implementation of environmental laws uh, then guide human judgment decision and actions expressed by different sections of society so these are various needs of the environmental education uh, ethics so in current situation every human being must follow the following environmental ethics that is each species has a right to exist we should love honor and nurture our mother earth all species are interdependent loss of one species may have far-reaching consequences on other species or it can lead to the destabilization of the ecosystem people must be a uh, hold responsible for the future generation i mean i mean uh, what kind of resources we are using and how much we are uh, leaving for our future generation then sustainable use of resources people must take responsibility of uh, their actions humans must uh, align with the same ecological limitation as other species do and population should be controlled to reduce pressure on existing natural resources so in ancient era all aspects of nature were considered divine and all resources were considered sacred this uh, i mean in ancient India was considered vegetarian vegetation water bodies and hills were considered as sacred uh, but due to the race of development uh, all these resources have been used unexploitedly in that that violates the concepts principles of environmental education as well as as well as environmental ethics so this was all about environmental education and environmental ethics so i hope you all have enjoyed the lecture thank you